morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are watching this, know that I appreciate you. Um, I'm starting the intro over because I don't know that I'm going to continue with this video that I just did as far as, you know, tacking on to it. So this will probably be just a whole new video. So I apologize again for the angle. Um, but I still don't have, I still haven't purchased a hand, hands-free uh, device for this vehicle. Um, and the other two that I had, I, I tossed those out because they just did not work for this vehicle. So I have to find something that will work. Um, but, um, so I apologize for the angle. Um, and at some point I may open the windows so you'll have background noise because I have to go get gas. Um, if you've watched the previous video, I said that in the previous video that I need to go get gas. I have not stopped to do that yet. Um, and I know that rolling with this air conditioner on is going to swallow the fuel that I have. So I need to go get gas. And I'll probably do that when I go back to the office, when I get back to the office, because I'm headed back to the office. Um, I had to get to the leasing office where I live so I could turn in my rent. Um, but I'm headed back to work because I have to pick something up that had not made it there by the time I was ready to leave. Um, this angle is just going to get weirder and weirder. So if the angle gets weird, I, I apologize, or even more weird, I apologize, but I cannot focus on touching this thing every time it shifts uh, because I have to concentrate on driving which is why I prefer hands-free devices because it allows me not to have to worry about touching the phone while I'm driving um, but I was talking before about my husband and his illnesses and what that has done to his mood um, and the fact that he's now suffering from depression and uh, is a bit more impatient and agitated and even ag aggressive uh, not physically so but in general he is more aggressive and it's not just with me um, he has gotten into heated debates with just the general public about something that he did not appreciate that person doing. Um, he is always uh, arguing with someone about being in his personal space, which I understand the agitation with people popping that bubble uh, because I don't care for it either. The only difference is I don't I don't react the way that he does. Um, he has gotten into heated debates with someone who um, he didn't agree with something they did, and, and he didn't agree with it, so he wanted to like physically fight the person. Now, mind you, my husband is all of five four and uh, one hundred pounds, but that does not mean that it comes that's his size comes into consideration when he gets aggressive. He suffers tremendously with Napole the Napoleon complex um, and his diminished, his even more diminished size, I think has heightened that complex. Um, but the whole point to me talking about all of this is, is I really wanna talk about being a caregiver and quite honestly how difficult being a caregiver um, is 
I won't say can't be because it is difficult. Um, there are times, there are some people that are blessed with everything that is needed to be a caregiver and did not put a ton of pressure on them. And then there are people like me that was, and I knew from early on that being a caregiver was not my calling uh, for me personally. However, it seems to be what happens or what has happened to me on more than one occasion. Being a caregiver is not for me. Um, and when I say that, I mean, there's another Okay, what in the world? I don't know. Okay. In, in the previous video, I mentioned that there was this huge dog on the side of the road that had been hit. And, you know, I feel for the dog and I feel for the people that lost him. I did not remember that this morning when I was on this same highway going to work that I saw a huge dog on the side of the road that had been hit. So there's a dog on either side of the highway, huge, big black dogs that have been hit. I don't know what they were doing on the highway, but at least they look like dogs. Um, but they have, were both hit. Um, but anyway, that's beside the point. That's not the point at all. But um, being a caregiver is not me. I, I had my children, I birthed my children, I cared for my children well, um, to the best of my ability, and I enjoyed the majority of that. Yes, being a parent is hard, so I can honestly say I enjoyed the majority of that. Um, but when I say being a caregiver, I don't mean caring for children. I don't mean that at all. Um, I mean adults I knew that being an adult caregiver was not me some people are, are born with it some people have the knack for it that's not who I am um, but somehow it keeps coming back to me um, it's not who I am it's why I told my grandparents early on like before either of them ever got sick like sick sick I told them early on that I could not be their caregiver, that I, you know, if it came down to it, I would find them, and I think I have mentioned this before as well, that I would find them a facility that could care for them um, well and um, was affordable and to their liking if the need should arise. And... When I lost my job in 2013, when I was laid off in 2013, um, they wanted me to become their full-time caregiver. And I, I said, no, I fought that thing for a very long time. I fought that be being their caregiver. Um, and I did not take it on until 2015. I did not make any plans until like the middle of 2015 to become their caregiver. Um, but I, I tried everything that I could to keep from being their caregiver. I did find them, just as I said I would, a good facility, a good, a great, quite honestly, assisted living facility that allowed them the freedom of their own apartments um, connected. They would have their own apartments connected because they both um, qualified for their own apartments if they wanted, or they could be in the same apartment. I loved the fact that they had that option of being in the same apartment or being in connected apartments, if that's what they wanted. Um, they had nurses on staff. They didn't have to worry about food because their food was provided for. The only thing that they would have to really, you know, be concerned with was a snack. If they wanted snacks in the middle of the night or um, something extra during the day, they had many fridges in the apartment so that they could ha have those things there. Um, and what we paid per month would take care of every bit of that. Um, and they said no. More importantly, my grandfather said no because 
he didn't want to give up his entire social security check. Um, they both would have had to have given up their entire social security checks to do this. And he didn't want to do that. And it wasn't that he didn't want to do it because he didn't think it was a great facility. He didn't want to do it because he didn't want to not, he didn't want to not be able to play the lottery because they were avid lottery players. And if we had them in that facility, they would not have been, a, they wouldn't have had any extra money to play the lottery. So... I found this facility for them and they said no. I found other places for them to go and they said no. So I can turn this off now. So um, it was really not my desire to be their um, caretaker. It really wasn't. But, and I had once we could not find the right facility for them to you know go to um or for them to approve of rather um i helped them find excuse me a homemaker an agency um where they could have the homemaker come out and you know do the laundry clean up around the house cook meals um accompany them to doctor's appointments and things of that nature and um, we did that for a while and we went through quite a few and then it got to the point where I just was not satisfied with the quality of people that we were getting. Switched agencies and everything. Um, but the last agency that they were with was an agency that I decided to go to and attend the training so that I could become their caregiver because that agency allowed you to care for a family. A lot of agencies don't allow you to care for a family and get paid. They want you to take care of someone else outside of family. Um, so anyway, I made that decision towards the end of the summer, beginning of fall um, in 2015. And um, hadn't done it yet, but I had made the decision that I was going to do it. And then in September, my grandfather passed away. So I knew that I had to do it. So I did that. I took the courses, um, got the certification to do it for them, was employed by the agency and decided to take on doing this. Um, and after my grandfather passed, I had to take care of my grandmother. And... Um, taking her in was difficult. It was a very stressful time, not just because we had lost my grandfather, but because not only did we lose my grandfather, but I had to move my grandmother out of her place. And in the midst of trying to find somewhere where it was safe for her to be, we were in a home, we were in a house, um, and um, we were talking about moving anyway, but not right away. But when we had to take her in, we knew that we had to move because it was not safe for her to maneuver. It was two stories. We couldn't have her going up and down the stairs. So we took her in finally after we moved and caring for her was a struggle. It was a huge struggle. Um, but in the midst of that, then my mom passed. So I was under a lot of stress. Um, was my grandfather passing, having to move, take my grandmother in, and, and my mom passed in between all of that. So it was huge stress, huge strain, and I became ill um, for the second time after dealing with a lot of stress. And that's when it was decided that my grandmother needed to go to a nursing home. Being a caregiver is not easy especially when you are caring for a loved one and you know who they used to be and now they've become someone else. Um, my grandmother was not necessarily the easiest person to deal with, but she wasn't um, evil either. But when her Alzheimer's advanced and she was not sleeping, and she was not um, in her right mind, quite honestly. She wasn't in her right mind. She would have full-on conversations with absolutely no one. Um, conversations as if she were on the telephone talking with her sisters 
or a good friend of hers, um, that became difficult. And she was up at all hours of the night, which meant that I was not sleeping, which meant that my husband was not sleeping. She was turning on the stove, but you know, stoves, gas stoves now have that click where you get the fumes before you get the flame. She was turning on the stove and getting the fumes. So now, you know, the house is filled with fumes, gas fumes. Um, finally taking her to putting her in the hospital for an illness, taking her to her doctor for a follow-up and the doctor saying she's got to go into a nursing home. All of that solidified for me that being a caregiver is not something that I'm cut out for. It's just difficult. It's not easy. And having to take care of my husband is not easy. My stress levels, which I try so very hard to keep down because I know the outcome of me getting sick because I got sick last year because my stress levels were so high and there was just so much going on with him and I wasn't taking care of me. Being a caregiver is not easy. And to see this man transform, now his tongue was always sharp. It's always been sharp for the entire time we've been together. It's always been sharp. It's always something that I've tried to talk to him about and let him know that, you know, it's not so much what he says, but how he says it. Um, and sometimes it is what he says. You know, you can't say everything to everybody. And the fact that you're just being real or keeping it 100 isn't sufficient enough. Because you have to treat people with kindness, whether you want to or not, um, in order for you to get certain things, certain, you know, the outcome would be much better if you treated people nicely, if you treated people with kindness. And that was something that we talked about all the time. That sharp tongue has gotten even sharper. Um, his aggression, as I said in the previous video, has, has heightened. His impatience has intensified. Um, and when he doesn't get what he wants, he is, for lack of a better word, a monster. Um, a monster and me having to deal with that on a daily basis and let, let me say this there are some great days we have days where there is absolutely no sign of his temper his attitude his aggression his impatience we have great days but when we have bad days we have really bad days and this morning was one of those times and it was all because I told him no to something that he wanted now my focus is on something totally different right now my focus is not on the luxuries of life my focus is on making sure that we have a roof over our head and um, that the bills are are paid and we've been in this struggle for a while and I'm not caring very much about extracurricular activities even with my grandson being here if we don't have the funds to take him to all of the places that we really wanted to take him to then guess what we'll make it fun in the house we'll make it fun in the house um we'll go to free things you know things that don't require us to spend a whole lot or any money um things that don't require us to spend massive amounts of gas you know so I try to get that point across to him and it's not always easy so I'm gonna go in the office and get what I gotta get and then I'll come back out and try to continue this um, with another video peace and blessings remember to walk in your purpose and know that I appreciate you